Last week, I made a video saying that Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro is pretty bad at coding. But after spending another week really testing it and putting it through its paces, and I'll show you exactly what I built with it in this video, I have to admit that I was wrong. Pretty, pretty wrong because Gemini 2.5 Pro is actually incredible. And it is now one of the two models that I use every single day. But it is still not perfect, and an update from just a few days ago introduced a completely new problem. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Rob, and I've been a coder for over 20 years. But now I teach founders build their next million dollar ideas with AI and automation. And today I'm going to admit that I was wrong, and I'm going to show you how. So, in my comparison between the two, Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude Sonnet 3.7, I let the AIs battle it out in a dystopian AI website competition. And in it, Claude absolutely crushed it while Gemini kept running in circles. But here's the thing. Without knowing it then, I was trying to make Gemini do something that it's just not good at. And after a full week of additional testing, I learned why. But before we get into that, there's something massive that has just changed. Because until literally just a few days ago, you couldn't actually pay to use Gemini 2.5 Pro, which meant that you were stuck with Google's free usage allowances. And if you were coding anything bigger, then, you know, just a couple of tests, which I definitely did, then you would hit these limits very fast. And I did. I had to like circle through like several private and business accounts to get like higher limits to actually use Gemini. But this has now changed. So you can now pay for unlimited usage. And this is where things get kind of weird. So let me show you the actual pricing because it is really important to understand that the pricing on paper might not actually be the pricing that you end up paying. So I'll explain to you what tokens means in just a second, but just for the comparison's sake, look at this. So the Claude 3.7 Sonnet model charges $3 per input and $15 per output. The Gemini 2.5 Pro model has two pricing tiers based on the number of tokens that you require, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But in comparison, if you stay under 200,000 tokens, it would be 125 instead of three per input and 10 per output, which would mean it's less than half the price that Claude Sonnet 3.7 charges for the input and about a third less for the output. And even if you go over 200,000 tokens, it is still a bit cheaper, $2.50 versus $3 for the input and $15 for the output would be the same as Sonnet 3.7. And here's what the tokens really mean, right? So everything you ask it, and critically important, everything that you ask it to remember throughout a conversation is the input tokens. And the output tokens, it's its answers. So that includes everything you know that it instructs you to do or all the code that it generates. So for inputs and outputs under 200,000, it would charge you the lower tier and for everything above 200,000, it would charge you the higher tier. But here's the thing. Either way, you should save money with Gemini 2.5 Pro because even if you use more than 200,000 tokens, the maximum price that you were supposed to pay is 250 and 15, which is still slightly cheaper than 3 and 15. But unfortunately, this is not true. And this guy on the ChatGPT coding Reddit had to learn that the hard way because he was charged over $500 for one day of coding. And this actually makes sense because there's a huge difference between Sonnet 3.7 and Gemini 2.5 Pro. And that, again, comes down to the token context windows. Gemini 2.5 Pro has four times the amount of memory that Sonnet 3.7 has. And unfortunately, that means that it can lead to way higher input tokens, which you are charged for, right? And that means you will pay more even though the model itself would charge less. So even though on paper, a Gemini 2.5 Pro is supposed to be cheaper because of the context that you require and can use, you don't have to, but can use, the prompts get so much more expensive that you will end up paying more to get similar results. But there is a thing that you can do to change that. And that is open new chats often, because whenever you open a new chat, it erases the memory and you start from scratch. And that means that your model is not only cheaper, but even if you use something like Cursor or Windsurf, which is a subscription, right? And you don't really pay per, per use of tokens, but more like per request, 
it makes the result of the models faster, more reliable, and it doesn't get confused that much. So the best practice is to open new chats often. And if you do that, you should still save money even if you use Gemini 2.5 Pro. And this is even more applicable if you use something like Klein or Roo Code because then you pay per token. And that means that if you just have one chat with like lots of context or memory, you will end up like this guy paying hundreds of dollars per day. But with that out of the way, let's look at what Gemini is actually great at because I have discovered that it is really good at analyzing large code bases and making big changes like adding new features to big projects. So let me show you a quick example. So I have recently launched a product. This video is not about this. It's just something that I'm very proud of and something that I've built exclusively, almost exclusively with Gemini 2.5 Pro, right? So this is a sales page. Starting at the top, this page has dynamic pricing, which means that every few sales, the price goes up. It helps me understand how much to actually price this product because I didn't know what to price it for, right? And you can see it has like say $50, 17%, early bird pricing increases to this price and 24 sales. This is not some like made up stuff. This is actual logic that happens in the back end where I track the sales and then say, okay, how many sales are there in each bracket and when the price goes up automatically, all of this stuff, right? Which was really fun to build with Gemini. And then when we scroll down, you see there are some like pricing tables and the design, just to get this out of the way, all the design I always did with Sonnet 3.7 and I'll get there in a minute, but all the logic is done by Gemini. So here, for example, you can like see that there were like previous pricing tiers, right? So there was like 97, 147, 197. And this whole logic of like them being sold out or again here, it shows like 24 spots left, 17% off, right? Here's like the full price. This also, it looks like this is a static text. It's not like this, this, this number $50, it changed with every bracket. And then another really powerful feature is this. So this is a brand new product. I don't have any testimonials yet, right? So I wanted to take some of the really nice YouTube comments that some of you leave under these videos and put them there to like build some trust, right? And the problem was that I had this vision of like having them like pop up like, like raindrops on a lake or something, like reverse raindrops on a lake, if that makes sense. That's, that's how I try to explain it to the AI, right? And the problem with that was that they would overlap because they all have like different sizing, you know, multiple lines of text, longer lines of text. And I needed to find out a way to display them, to let them like pop up without them actually overlapping because then people wouldn't be able to read it. So Gemini went deep and started cooking really hard, right? They, it, it was like way over complicating things, but it was really interesting to watch because it would propose different like different ways to see available spacing to make it more likely that things wouldn't like pop up and what it took me an hour and a half to make this feature and in the end it came up with like a quadrant system which then i adjusted from there because that was the most reliable but the point is not only did it make it work but it made it work on every resolution so this is like desktop right but you can make it smaller and it will still not overlap so it's a fully responsive feature right and you can even like, even on the phone, you can still see it, it works. So this was really impressive and Gemini did that. But again, Gemini is not yet perfect. It still struggles to create beautiful things. So for me, having, for example, this hero section up here, that the video would be a bit further out and you know have everything like design and whatever, I had to resort to Sonnet because Gemini Wow, Gemini is so bad at making anything look good is wild. So Claude still is the uncontested king when it comes to designing things. All of what you see here, right, I did with Sonnet and then the underlying logic was Gemini because the reality is that we right now need both of these models. They complement each other perfectly and the competition, and that's something that I'm really looking forward for, uh, forward to is the competition between these two will hopefully drive prices down, which Ooh, I would love that because AI coding is expensive. So my workflow right now is simple. I start my project with Claude 3.7 Sonnet and I get everything set up and most importantly designed nicely. Then I switch to Gemini 2.5 Pro for most of the actual development work. And I often start new chats when a task is done because otherwise you will end up paying more with Gemini and we don't want that, right? 
And then when I want something designed again, like a new feature or even adjust or modify an existing design, I switch back to Sonnet and I'll just go back and forth. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe. I post two to three videos like this every single week, helping non-tech founders build better apps and hire fewer developers to build their next million dollar idea. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.